This is for the Ethics Review class at Parker University. In this video, I want to give 12 quick tips for employers. First tip is be fair, be consistent. Treat your employees equally when appropriate. Treat them unequally in accordance with the, you know, when it's appropriate. Uh, one thing small business owners often do is they develop favorite employees. And if you break the rules or you allow the favorite employee to break or bend the rules, that's going to cause problems in your practice. So be fair, be consistent. Uh, listen carefully, investigate carefully when you re receive complaints. Number two, hire employees to fit your culture. As I've talked about previously, a business owner needs to think about what culture they're trying to create in their business and they need to hire the employees that will help build and develop that culture rather than hire employees that don't really fit and expect them to learn to fit. Certain job skills can be taught, but teaching the culture or, or, or bending to the culture can be more challenging. Number three, interview and conduct background checks thoroughly. Before you offer someone a job, be very careful and thorough. It's much easier to tell somebody, I'm sorry, I'm not going to offer you the job, than to tell somebody, I'm glad you've worked here for 30 days, but I'm going to fire you now. Uh, it's just a much easier process. It's less uh, uh, disruptive to the worker. It's less disruptive to the workplace. Number four, pay overtime, pay taxes. Uh, unless you are absolutely confident that an employee is exempt under the Fair Labor Standards Act, their job meet duties meet the appropriate requirements and you are paying them a salary, Unless you are absolutely certain of that, you should pay your employees by the hour and you should pay them time and a half when they work more than 40 hours a week. By the way, if you need to know more information about who's exempt or not exempt, there's a lot of information available on the Department of Labor's website, U.S. Department of Labor's website. Uh, probably the best place to start looking is their fact sheets, F-A-C-T fact sheets. And that has some good basic summaries of the regulations for the different uh, exempt categories. But be sure you can check all the boxes, not just some of them. If you're trying to decide whether a worker is an employee or an independent contractor, assume that they're an employee unless you can be absolutely certain that they're an independent contractor. And because they're employees, that means you will need to withhold wages or withhold taxes from their wages. Um, and pay them appropriately and pay the IRS appropriately. Number five, use progressive discipline. It is much easier to teach one of your current employees to follow the rules than it is to go through the process of finding a new employee. As long as the employee continues to fit within your culture, uh, you need to work with them and try to teach them rather than getting rid of them. But if they choose to be unteachable, then certainly it's appropriate to terminate the employee. My experience is if the employee is a good fit in the practice, they fit within the culture. When you point out anything they're not doing correctly, they want to keep the job and they will start doing it correctly, especially if they've received written notice about what the problem is. If the employee does not want to correct the behavior after receiving written notice, they were probably never a good fit with the culture in the first place. Get rid of those employees. Number six, keep your policies and manuals simple, make sure they're understandable, and keep them up to date. As things change in your practice, keep them up to date. Number seven, discourage stray comments in the workplace. What are stray comments? I mean, certainly in any ordinary workplace, there's going to be a little bit of a uh, uh, Let's just call it horseplay between the workers. Uh, and that's not something you need to absolutely prohibit. But pay attention to stray comments about things, uh, particularly when employees are gossiping about other employees or gossiping about patients. Uh, for example, if, if your employees are, are sharing a story about how badly one of the patient's children behaved while the uh, parent was being adjusted, that's not an appropriate discussion in the workplace. 
Uh, it may not be heard by anybody else, but if a patient happens to overhear it, that can be a problem. Certainly, if the patient being discussed overhears it, that can be a problem. So discourage your employees from those kinds of stray comments. Remind them that they're at the workplace for the purpose of uh, uh, performing their jobs. Number eight, use written agreements. Spell out in writing how much you're paying your employees. Spell out what the deductions are. Uh, if there are any deductions that are not required by law, like a deduction for health care, uh, that needs to be approved in writing and signed by the employee. Number nine, make promises sparingly, keep them faithfully. It's always a better practice to under promise and over deliver. Much better than making promises. And I do think some small business owners, even though they may intend well, they often over promise what they're actually able to deliver. Number 10, take complaints of sexual harassment seriously. If you receive a complaint from an employee or a patient that sexual misconduct or sexual harassment has occurred, you need to take it seriously. You need to investigate it appropriately. Do not jump to the conclusion immediately that the complaint is accurate. There's often two sides to every story. Make sure you've listened to both sides of the story before you draw a conclusion about it but you have an obligation to protect both your patients and your employees from sexual harassment and sexual misconduct. After you've investigated a complaint of sexual harassment, be sure you put something in writing. If somebody is being disciplined, that needs to be spelled out in writing. If someone like a patient is being asked not to return to your practice, that should also be put in writing. Number 11, make sure you know the record keeping requirements for IRS, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, OSHA, Department of Labor, Texas Workforce Commission, etc. And make sure you follow all of those record keeping requirements. Many times there are software programs to help you do that. Uh, if you use those software programs, make sure you actually use them and don't just purchase them. You're also required to post certain notices to remind your employees about their, their rights under the various laws. And actually one of the first things, probably many times, the first piece of mail you will receive as a new business owner is a piece of mail that makes it look like you need to spend a hundred or more dollars to purchase some poster to notify your employees about all these uh, different rights under these different laws. If you don't have any employees, you don't have to buy the, per buy the poster. The poster is not legally required. If you've got the time to go to the website for the Department of Labor and the other websites, you can find the appropriate notices you need to post and get them posted at no expense to you. But it does take some time to go find all of those. The other thing I'll tell you is that even if you buy one of those posters, many times they don't include the state specific uh, portions. So for example, in Texas, the Texas Payday Act requires that you post a notice to tell your employees what days they will be paid on. Uh, and the uh, uh, workers' compensation rules also require a notice about workers' compensation insurance. So make sure you comply with those requirements to post the notice, but don't spend the money to, to buy an expensive poster unless that's really easier for you than finding the notices on your own. Uh, number 12. If you receive a complaint, a claim based on unemployment or a claim based on discrimination, respond thoughtfully, respond carefully, consistently, and support your response with documentation. If you receive an unemployment claim, most of the time if the employee has been terminated, they're going to receive unemployment compensation anyway. In that circumstance, don't waste your time fighting the unemployment claim. If you receive a discrimination complaint, uh, that can be a more serious complaint and you need to be careful. And that may be a time that you need to be consulting with an attorney to make sure the response is not going to get you into more trouble than, than you're already in. Uh, good leadership consists of showing average people how to do the work of superior people. Remember, as a business owner, as a manager of employees, your job is not 
to abuse them or not to keep them under your control. Your job is to help them do develop as workers and to do better work. And Tom Landry said the, sec the secret to winning is constant, consistent management. Um, managing a business is not an easy thing. It requires time. It requires effort. And that must be applied with absolute persistence. And if you don't have that persistence, it's going to be very difficult to build a successful business. But if you do put in the work, your chances of building a successful business, a successful chiropractic practice are very good.